Live fire drills from multiple parties, China keeping its presence around Taiwan, despite officially declaring it over after three days. This comes as the U.S. and Philippines hold their largest joint drills nearby. Meanwhile, the U.S. Strategic Command is kicking off its annual nuclear command and control exercises, known as Global Thunder. What do you think about all these drills? Let us know below and subscribe if you haven't already. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. War games of the nuclear kind. The U.S. Strategic Command is kicking off Global Thunder, its annual nuclear command and control exercises. There will be an increase in bomber aircraft flights during this time. The entire Strategic Command of the U.S. Armed Forces is participating, as well as the U.K. Strategic Command states the purpose of GT-23 is to enhance nuclear readiness and ensure a safe, secure and reliable strategic deterrence force. Officials note this is an annual exercise and is not in response to actions by any nation or other actors. That's as China conducted live fire drills around Taiwan over the weekend, following President Tsai's meeting with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy in the U.S. And joining us to help explain the significance of the exercises is Captain James Fennell, retired former intelligence director with the U.S. Navy's Pacific Fleet. What is involved in this? It seems the U.S. isn't going to be firing actual nuclear missiles. So what are they training for? That is primarily around three uh, areas of three types of delivery of weapons. You have uh, air-launched nuclear weapons. You have silos, which have intercontinental ballistic missiles. And then you have our ballistic missile submarines with submerged launch ballistic missiles. And having these exercises ensures our command and control over these forces and ensures the National Command Authority, the President and the Secretary of or, uh, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs and the Secretary of Defense that we can execute when called upon. Another drill from China is happening, with Taiwan as the apparent target. Beijing said its troops already ended the war game on Monday. But on Tuesday, Beijing kept sending fighter jets to the island. NTD's Jeremy Sandberg has more on the ongoing drills near Taiwan. Combat readiness patrols. That's what the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, is calling its military exercises around Taiwan. Taiwan's defense ministry says over 90 CCP military aircraft flew around the island in missions Monday and that it spotted nine Chinese ships and 26 aircraft, including fighter jets, carrying out patrols nearby late Tuesday morning. A Chinese military ship carried out a live fire exercise near the Taiwan Strait. That happened near Pingtan Island, China's closest point to Taiwan. The Chinese regime began exercises on Saturday after Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen returned from the U.S. Tsai met with U.S. representatives, including House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, on her trip. The meeting infuriated the CCP. It warned resolute action and countermeasures would be taken if the meeting happened. The CCP simulated precision attacks and blockades during its exercises. President Tsai criticized Beijing for its response. China used this to launch military exercises, causing instability in Taiwan and the region. This is not a responsible attitude for a major country in the region. Japan's defense minister denounced the drills around Taiwan on Tuesday. He called it intimidating training to seize sea and air control around the island. Meanwhile, the U.S. and the Philippines are launching their largest combat drills in decades on Tuesday. The exercises involve live fire drills that include sinking a target vessel in waters across the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait with a coordinated airstrike and artillery bombardment. It's likely to anger the CCP, who warned against the intensifying U.S. military deployment to the region. Jeremy Sandberg, NTD News. James Fennell, retired former intelligence director with the U.S.'s Pacific Fleet, added another point. Although China is spreading propaganda that Beijing's strength is on the rise, while America's is declining, a key U.S. partner in the region isn't changing sides. At least as far as the Philippines are concerned, they recognize uh, that their security uh, situation uh, is benefited by the relationship they have with the United States. Besides China's activities, the U.S. and the Philippines are holding annual joint drills called the Balakatan, or shoulder to shoulder. And part of those exercises are happening near Taiwan. Fennell calls it a subtle signal to Beijing. There may be the, the real, very real possibility that American forces 
uh, in a time of hostility, that which could threaten the Philippines, American forces could be working from, from the Philippines. Not As for weapons, around 25 U.S. weapons producers plan to visit Taiwan in May. They're set to discuss joint production of drones and ammunition with the island. The group will be led by a retired commander of the U.S. Marines. That's according to what the U.S. Taiwan Business Council's president told Japanese newspaper Nikkei. Beyond weapons, other factors would also prove vital in case of a hot war. One of them is communication and the infrastructure that supports it. One theory is that in case of a Beijing invasion of Taiwan, China could cut the undersea cables that allow the island to talk to the outside world. In that case, what about bringing Elon Musk's Starlink satellite system into Taiwan as backup? That's the idea two U.S. lawmakers floated on Saturday. They are Congress members Michael McCall, chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, and French Hill. Both of them were members of a U.S. delegation that visited Taiwan last week. They called Starlink one of the constructive takeaways in their talks with Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen over the weekend. Back to China's drills around Taiwan, how are people from both sides responding? Here are comments from two Shanghai locals. I think the three-day military drills may not be strong enough. We can continue to demonstrate China's capabilities even under normal circumstances. That's what I think. After all, we are compatriots, right? We cannot be too ruthless. We have to show our attitude. As long as it doesn't push us to a certain point, I think they, the military drills, should be enough for now. On the other hand, Taipei residents on Tuesday said they were largely unfazed by China's war games. I think in places with one-party dominance, the first thing to be sacrificed are the rights of a certain group of people. I think at least right now in Taiwan, we are being protected on some level. I also think that this is the thing that's worth being cherished the most in Taiwan, a comparably free and democratic country as compared to China. Life in Taiwan has continued as normal despite the regional tensions. Civilian passenger flights operating nearby the island, including over the Taiwan Strait, also continued uninterrupted. Ever see these ad inserts in local newspapers? Made to look like news, they boast China as a tourist destination or paint a positive image of Chinese leader Xi Jinping. Like this one, published on USA Today, saying Xi's visit to an American school left an indelible mark on its students. These news articles lookalikes are actually ads paid by Beijing's top propaganda outlet, China Daily Newspaper. Adding these inserts in U.S. publications is one tool Beijing uses to influence American policy and opinion. And the outlets printing them are some of the most influential in the U.S., like foreign policy, Time magazine, and the Los Angeles Times. Since 2016, China has spent over $300 million to influence U.S. public opinion more than any other country. That's according to Open Secrets, a Washington, D.C.-based nonprofit that tracks lobbying data. China Daily is one of Beijing's top agents carrying out the task in the U.S., spending over $8 million in 2022 to do it. Where did that money go? Here's a breakdown of some of the company's ad expenses last year. Last March, the Beijing outlet paid foreign policy over $30,000 for advertisements and another $30,000 in April and June. For Time magazine, that number jumps to around $100,000 a month from February to May. As for USA Today, a steady sum of over $50,000 paid in January, April and June. For the Los Angeles Times, the amount reaches the tens of thousands from January to June. The Chinese Communist Party also placed ads in some regional newspapers, such as the Houston Chronicle, the largest daily newspaper in Houston, Texas. In the New England area, the Boston Globe, and on the West Coast, the Seattle Times. Besides public opinion, what's Beijing up to when it comes to elected officials? A Chinese diplomat sent an email to the office of a U.S. congressman attacking one of his bills. The measure condemns the Chinese regime's live forced organ harvesting from prisoners of conscience. Here's the latest. The New York Post reported the email. It was sent to Congressman Smith's office one day after the House passed his bill, the Stop Forced Organ Harvesting Act.
The bill aims to condemn, investigate, and punish CCP officials for forced organ harvesting. Chinese official Zhou Zheng called the bill ridiculous and denied that the regime engages in forced organ harvesting. That is, despite the fact that many independent experts have concluded that Beijing effectively murders unwilling patients by taking their hearts, livers, kidneys, or other organs. The organs are sold as part of the profitable transplant trade. Congressman Smith, who's been working on this issue for more than 20 years, recently explained to me what he's discovered about it. Anywhere from 60 to 100,000 young people, average age 28, are murdered by Xi Jinping every year to get their organs. They prey upon the Falun Gong, for example, because they are so healthy. Falun Gong is a spiritual meditation practice focused on aligning oneself with the principles of truthfulness, compassion, and tolerance. And Joe, the CCP official who wrote the email to Congressman Smith, doubled down on the CCP's ongoing persecution of the spiritual practice. He wrote that the spiritual practitioners, quote, orchestrated claims that the Chinese regime is abusing them and also the predominantly Muslim Uyghurs of northwestern Xinjiang province. However, a UN Human Rights Commissioner says forced organ harvesting in China appears to be targeting specific ethnic, linguistic, or religious minorities held in detention, often without being explained the reasons for arrest or given arrest warrants at different locations. Aside from Smith's bill in Congress, Texas is the latest to take action. The state passed a bill last week to prevent Texans from unknowingly becoming complicit in forced organ harvesting. Over in Washington, the U.S. is in talks with China. Officials say they're looking to arrange potential visits to Beijing by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen and Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo. Here's the statement from the White House. And when it's appropriate for the two leaders to talk, then, then that'll happen. Kirby added that officials are also working to get Secretary of State Antony Blinken on a plane to China. He canceled a visit there earlier this year after the Chinese spy balloon incident. The aircraft floated across the U.S., suspected of surveilling U.S. military bases along its path. Beijing maintains it only collected weather data. I want to stress, that said, that we are and have been able to maintain lines of communication between our two countries, even throughout all these tensions. He noted the U.S. would like to see the relationship get onto better footing. Is China showing signs of compromise? On Tuesday, Australia agreed to temporarily suspend its case against China at the World Trade Organization, aiming to resolve their dispute over barley imports. Beijing, on the same token, said it would conduct a three- to four-month review on tariffs imposed on Australian barley, a decision made in 2020. Its foreign ministry said it's willing to return to relations with Australia going forward. But Canberra maintained its firm stance toward China. We have made clear that we believe there is no justification for the measures that China introduced in relation to Bali. We have, in return, we have agreed to temporarily suspend the World Trade Organization dispute for the agreed review period. But Australia's Foreign Minister Penny Wong also added that its WTO case will resume if China fails to remove the tariffs by the deadline. In May of 2020, China imposed a hefty tariff of 80.5 percent on Australian barley, dealing a major blow to the industry. The action was seen as retaliation, following the former Australian government's call for an inquiry into the origins of COVID-19. That statement angered China. In response to the barley tariffs, Australia filed a complaint to the World Trade Organization. The government also expects a similar result in a second dispute on wine tariffs imposed by China. Conflict at the Chinese-Indian border. Beijing condemning India's Home Affairs Minister for visiting a village there. In reply, the Indian official sent a stern message to China. Here's what he said. Our policy is clear, that we want peace from everyone. However, no one will be able to encroach on even one inch of our land. India's Home Minister visited northeastern India Arunachal Pradesh on Monday. His visit was part of an inaugural project to boost infrastructure centered in a village called Kibithu. It comes after China tried to rename several places there in an effort to declare Chinese sovereignty of the area. Both China and India claim the disputed border region as their own territory, though Indian residents live in the village. China said on Monday that the minister's visit violated Beijing's territorial sovereignty. 
The two countries have repeatedly clashed over the land in recent years, sometimes suffering serious casualties. Chinese tech giant Alibaba on Tuesday showed off its new AI model to rival the popular American app ChatGPT. The Chinese AI model can be used to summarize meeting notes, write emails, and draft business proposals. It will also be added to Alibaba's voice assistant, and all in Chinese. Here's a closer look. Alibaba on Tuesday unveiled its generative artificial intelligence model, Tongyi Qianwen. It is the Chinese company's version of the tech that powers chatbot, ChatGPT. Alibaba said the AI model would be integrated into all of the firm's apps in the near future. The unveiling of Tongyi Qianwen, which means truth from a thousand questions, followed the launch of new products by the Alibaba-backed AI company Sense Time. In a film's demonstration, Alibaba's AI model drafted invitation letters, planned trip itineraries and gave shopping advice. CEO Daniel Chong said the technology will bring about big changes to the way people live their lives. Government scrutiny of AI has grown around the world since the launch of Microsoft-backed GPT last year. China's authorities have published draft rules outlining how generative AI services should be managed. It said content generated had to adhere to so-called core socialist values. It also had to obey laws on data scrutiny and personal information protection. Those who fall foul of the rules could face fines or criminal investigation, it added. Next, a look at the auto industry. Reports show German car makers are still closely tied to the Chinese market. And their performances are in for the first quarter. Here's how they did. BMW is still on track for higher sales this year despite a fall in demand in the first quarter. The German carmaker made the announcement Tuesday. BMW said it delivered just over 588,000 vehicles in Q1, down from 1.5% on the previous year. The only region the automaker saw sales growth was in the US, where purchases rose more than a tenth. But China proved a tough sell, with sales there down 6.6%. BMW said it expected the Chinese economy to stabilise over the course of this year. A slight fall in European sales was blamed on an export and production ban in the Russian market. BMW's results followed its German rival Volkswagen, which also showed group deliveries fell between January and February. But VW saw growth in China as well as North America. BMW was still confident about its guidance for this year despite what it called a challenging business environment. The carmaker said it was on course for slight sales growth in the full year. It sees one key driver of growth as fully electric vehicles. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for two years. Here's what to look out for in our second half. All eyes are on Taiwan and its communist neighbor's aggression. But how do China-Taiwan relations play into the U.S.? and its position as leader of the international world order. Grant Newsham, retired Marine colonel and author of When China Attacks, shares his insight. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Epoch TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Thanks for watching China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. See you tomorrow. A performance that truly matters for each and every one of us. This is what you've been waiting for. See it at least once in your lifetime. Get tickets now at shenyun.com.